It was May 1991. David was homeless on the streets of Portland and just trying to get some sleep in a covered doorway. And three young white uh, boys uh, decided that they wanted to beat up a homeless man, I guess. Once they attacked me, I woke up. Seeing that I was being attacked, I pulled a weapon that I, that, uh, uh, that I had found and fired, uh, uh, fired at one of them uh, and he died. Although it was in self-defense, David fled, scared no one would believe a man who had no home and a history of drug and alcohol abuse. And for 17 years, nobody knew. I mean, they knew the guy had died, but they didn't know who had shot him. And for 17 years, I, 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 I didn't say a word to anybody about, about what had happened. After years of moving from city to city and still not able to stay clean and sober, David gave up. He went to a Texas police station where he confessed. They thought I was a nut, but, but he could not understand. He said, why did you come forward? I said, because I had to. Because it was for 17, for 17 years, this had been eating at me. David was brought back to Portland to face a grand jury. They found him not guilty by self-defense. David was relieved at the verdict, glad he had done the right thing in coming forward. But he still needed help putting his life back together. He came to Portland Rescue Mission. I had no friends. I had no relationships. Only thing, only relationship I had was with that uh, bottle of vodka and uh, uh, that eight ball of crack. That was the relationship that I had. I had no relationship with humans. I had no relationship with, with God. I had no relationship with church, with nobody. The only relationship I had was my alcoholic and my drugs. And I didn't realize I had built this wall until I read in, in Genesis about uh, Joshua's story about the walls of Jericho. And that's when it dawned on me that the only way I'm going to ever get healed, I have to tear down that wall. And how do you tear down that wall when you don't know what built it up? Well, you have to look at it brick by brick. And that's what I did. Over several months at the mission, David engaged in recovery classes and counseling. With God's help, he began to heal from the guilt and finally deal with the underlying issues that led to his addiction. And that's the only thing going to ever set me free is by admitting my truth and coming to it and revealing all these false uh, beliefs and false uh, 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 things that I erected in my life. And with the help of the Pull and Rescue Mission, I'm being able to do that. And that's the hope that they still in you. That's what I mean by that hope. You know, they don't just tell you, okay, believe in God and he will then send you on your merry way. They give you tools. Now clean and sober and free from his past, David has a new life. Yeah, before I came to the Pool and Rescue Mission, my life was completely in turmoil. I didn't know where I was coming and going. I didn't know God. I didn't know anyone. Only thing I knew was that I needed help. I needed hope. And they, in turn, instilled in me that hope. Most people think of of, of uh, the Portland Rescue Mission as that mission at the end of the Burnside Bridge. And the new sober now is more than a bed, more than a meal. And that's so true. With your support of Portland Rescue Mission, you give more than a meal, more than a bed. You give hope. To donate, call 503-MISSION or give online at portlandrescuemission.org.